said you're kind of struggling with some things. So are you willing to have this conversation? I am. Okay, awesome. Because I feel like this is like really live action here right now, right? So if you had to describe in one or two sentences, A, what you're feeling. Let's, let's start with what you're feeling. And y'all, I'm doing a real quick, just wada bing, wada bang. Um, how would you describe it? Um, well, we're just uh, going through some financial things right now. Uh, okay. I'm trying to find a job and so, and trying not to be homeless again at the same time uh, because we've not been able to okay. pay rent this month. And then uh, okay. it's coming up, it's coming up on my son's birthday. So, um, I don't know, it's this time of year, I just always fall back into that depression with him not being around and things happening and uh, he's, okay. just been, he's just been weighing heavy on my mind lately and I yeah. know he's in a far better place <clears throat> but you know it's your, it's your kid you can't help it so sure sure sure, sure. okay so uh, what I hear you saying is you gave me a lot of circumstances and uh, which is very legitimate. And then you said, I'm really struggling with just feeling some depression. And at the root of that is really just kind of this, uh, what I'm going to call kind of like a PTSD type of feeling of grief yes. um, that you experience every year when this time goes rolls around, right? Yes. Okay. So what I want you to do is, so we've been able to kind of identify two um, emotions. We've identified depression and we've identified grief. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay, and so they're kind of all wrapped up. Which one do you think, uh, do you feel like the depression is coming first or the grief is coming or the grief is on top of the depression? I think the grief is on top of the depression because um, Mackie got a job, so now I'm having to depend on her and be it to pay the bills, and which, you know, she's okay. young, so she doesn't have that kind of a job that, <clears throat> you know, she's only sure. making like dollars an hour and so it's just kind of tough that I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've been the one to provide all these years and now I can't do it. Okay. Okay. So now we're getting somewhere. So Mackie is her daughter. How old is Mackie now? 19? 18. 18. Okay. So, um, so what I hear is there's kind of a message behind what you're experiencing right now. So every emotion kind of, we go through the emotion, really kind of press into it. What we'll discover is that emotion is saying something to me. Like I'm hearing a message in my circumstance. Um, so what message do you feel like is being spoken to you right now? Um, that I don't always have to be the, I don't always have to be the strong one. Okay. That it's, that it's okay to, it's okay to lean on people, but I still feel bad about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I love that you're giving me the positive message. So give me the message that you're struggling with though. Um, I struggle Would it be with, the opposite of that? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, struggling more with the um inadequate um, like um i'm not enough right now okay and um just been feeling kind of a whole lot of worthless and spending a whole lot of days in bed so that's probably part of it too i don't get up out of bed because i don't have nothing to do <clears throat> um, okay but um I know we're not supposed to like dwell. I mean, it's okay to dwell, just as Kimber would say, don't unpack and live there. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I remember her telling me that all the time and I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, but my, I have an audience. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna push the pause button right there. Okay. Um, because I want to kind of, I'm going to repeat back to you some words that I heard. Um, so I heard you t say inadequate, struggling with feeling inadequate, that I'm not enough. And then you tagged onto that, that I'm worthless. Um, and then you kind of threw in some behaviors that you've been engaging in that probably are cultivating these thoughts. 
Uh, most specifically, I'm just laying in bed all day because I have no reason to get out of bed. I don't. So what we're seeing here is a perfect example of, hey, I've got this emotion and this emotion has a message and this message is now driving my behaviors and my behaviors is make, making me more depressed and then my depression is telling me. And so we get caught in this cycle, right? So yes. we're, we're hearing this, the, all of it, the spiritual, the, the, the physical, the soul, the mind, the heart, all of this, all of these things uh, working together, um, in particular in your soul realm is really, um, trying to uh, fight for what is true in your life. So I'm gonna, now, now Shannon, I know you, um, and so I know what, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna invite God into this conversation. And so we're gonna, you know, just become very aware of his presence and his presence with you. I know you know the presence of God never leaves you, never forsakes you. And really, so what's, what's driving this depression isn't the feeling of depression. What's driving depression is always a thought behind depression, okay? And the thought is, I'm inadequate, I'm not enough, and I'm worthless. And on top of that is this guilt that now my daughter has to make money for me. And now I'm going through this season of grief. So you've got all this stuff going on, okay? But I want to really press into that message that I'm inadequate, I'm not enough, and I'm worthless. Okay, so I'm just repeating back your words. So now we're no longer really talking about depression. We're talking about core beliefs. Okay. Now, if God were to be sitting in this conversation, and he is, and you were to say, God, I just really feel and am struggling with thinking that I am inadequate. What do you think he would say to you? That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and that he don't make junk. <laughs> okay, good. I love that you quoted scripture. Do you know what scripture you quoted? Um, I don't know it exactly, but um, I do. I have this like different places where I just okay. see it. Okay, so you quoted out of uh, Psalm 139 which is a great passage that reminds us of who we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But let me tell you what the rest of that verse says. It says for that, my soul knows very well. So your soul is your mind. Mm -hmm. Your soul is your heart. And right now your mind is, is not really knowing that very well. Right? So right. you have this knowledge that this is what God says, but my mind is telling me this and my circumstances are telling me this. And honestly, now my behaviors, are telling me this right so now you're behaving according to your lie instead of behaving when you say I, I stay in bed all day mm -hmm. you're 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 aligning your actions with how you feel instead of aligning your actions with what is true okay so God says you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made you're not inadequate right that's all right is that what he says so yes. now I know we have this knowledge you're like well, that's just not how I feel right so now you've got this battle going on. So now we've re revealed truth. So what I want you to do is I want you to decide what will you choose to believe? Just going to uh, make a choice. What, don't tell me how you feel. Tell me what you want to choose. I want to choose the truth, which is I know, I know better than that. And I know that God don't make junk. He don't make trash. Okay. And, um, I wouldn't be here if there wasn't a purpose. Okay. What so, else? Um, I just want to choose for my mind and my, and my soul to be in alignment with each other where I know here, but I'm not participating here. Okay. I so, love the way you just said that. I'm not participating here. I love that. Okay, so I want you to put your hands on your head for me right now. And I want you to speak to your mind and I want you to say mind. Mind. I'm taking authority over you. I'm taking authority over you. And I'm declaring right now. And I'm declaring right now. That you have the mind of Christ. That I have the mind of Christ. That's right. I choose to believe. I choose to believe. I am adequate. I am adequate. 
I am enough. I am enough. And I have extreme value. And I have extreme value. Okay. God, I repent. Take your time. Just say, God, I repent. God, I repent. Of agreeing with lies. Of agreeing with lies. When I know the truth. When I know the truth. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. And shake my double-mindedness. And shake my double-mindedness. Bring me into. Bring me into. The fullness of your thoughts. The fullness of your thoughts. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I see a lot of tears going on. Share with me a little bit about what you were experiencing, even as you were just shifting, taking authority over your own mind and choosing to make this shift. I just feel like my heaviness that I carry around with me is like, it's like a, a bag of weights that he's trying to take off of me and uh that i have to let go of with both hands i can't be like still trying to, to let me hang on to that just a little bit longer and uh i have to let that go okay so if you, you were to, to add go. yeah so you mentioned earlier that you have aligned your actions with your lies, right? So you've heard me say multiple times that we have to add to our truth and action to reap the promise, okay? So what do you feel like you, you've you made this decision tonight, like this is this is really who I want to be. This is really what I believe and I'm repenting of just giving into these lies. Um, what actions do you need to change in your life to align yourself with what's true? Um, I need to change my behaviors first. And okay. uh, even though I don't want to, I got to, you know, I have to force myself to get up out of this bed. Okay. Out of this room. Cause I, I just live in, I live in here and, um, uh, I have to go out and, and, my purpose is there. I just got to find it. Okay. So I want you to be super specific. I love that you said, I've got to get up out of this bed. I've got to get out of here. So let's, let's be super specific. Let's set some really specific actionable goals for tomorrow. So um, getting up out of bed, does that mean you need to set your alarm? Does that mean you need to, what, what needs to happen there? Um, I probably need to sleep <laughs> at night because even though I'm in here, um, like I sleep all day long, but uh, then like I'm up one, one o'clock and I'm up until it's, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. So I've only been sleeping a couple hours a night or, uh, and then I get up and I'm up till like Mackie left for school at nine o'clock this morning and I didn't go to bed till 10. I was like, okay, I got to I got to fix that. I got to start getting my days and nights back because um, I need to be able to be functional. I don't know why. It just seems more important to be functional during the daytime. But I've always been a night shifter. So that's a habit that I, I need to break myself out of because I'm not a, any shifter right now. But um, just really important to get up and take a shower. Okay. So uh, what time do you think, what, what's a, what's a viable option there? What time is a good time for you to get up and get in the shower? Probably about nine, 10 o'clock. Okay. So let's say nine o'clock. Is that fair? Yes. You're going to get up at nine o'clock. You're going to get in the shower. You're going to brush your teeth. Yes. How are you going to feel after you do that? Probably feel like a whole human, <clears throat> a whole lot better. Okay. 
Hey, do you feel positive? Yes. Always feel better okay. after taking a shower. Now, so you, you mentioned that you stay in your room all day. Is there any way you can set a goal of saying, once I leave my room, I'm not going to go back into my room until it's time for bed? Um, I can. What would keep you from doing that? Um, I take Miss Kyra here out for walks. Cause okay. She needs exercise too because she just lays in here in the bed with me all day. So she doesn't leave my side very often. Okay. So, uh, so it would get me out of the house and, and so it is a doable goal. Like it's doable. Okay. So it's a doable goal to kind of say, Hey, once I get up, once I'm showered, I really don't need to be hanging out in my bedroom anymore. Yeah, that's a doable goal. Okay. You were slow on that response. What's going on in your mind? Let's take my TV out. Yeah. You know how you break a habit? How's that? Okay. Do you have a TV in your room? I do. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Take your TV out of your room, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's add, so we've, we've kind of put some actions to our new choices, which is I am adequate, I am enough, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you have a piece of paper and a pencil? Uh, I did. Okay, so for those of you who are watching, we're kind of just doing a live pop counseling session. Uh, because I feel as though people will, we receive even just by watching other people really appreciate Shannon being super vulnerable on the spot and just kind of sharing some depression that she's been struggling with, some behaviors that she's allowed to en enter into her life that have kind of um, aligned themselves, her actions have been aligning itself with the thoughts of depression. And so we're kind of uh, if you're just joining, we've kind of walked through discovering the message behind her depression. Everybody's message behind an emotion is different. Uh, for her, she was able to identify that she really struggles with feeling inadequate, um, that she's not enough and worthless. Those are the three words that she came up with. Um, and so we invited the presence of the Lord and we did some repenting of agreeing with those and she made a choice to agree with what God would say. So now we're going back around and saying, okay, let's change our, let's make some actionable items or actionable goals that will change our behaviors to align with what is true. And now I'm going to give her some ways to really start working on retraining her thoughts. So if you were to write down three I am statements that are true of who you are, that would attack those core lies, what would you write down? I am... I am enough. Okay, write that down for me. That's great. I am enough. If you guys who are watching, if you agree that Shannon is enough because God has designed her perfectly and holy, uh, would you give her a comment in there that say, we agree with you. You are enough. God says you are enough. Okay, what else? Um... I am, I, I am, I am worthy. I am worthy. That's a good one. I love it. Go ahead and write that one down. If you agree with Shannon that she is worthy because God died on the cross for her sins, would you please leave that comment in there? God says you are worthy. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. So, what else? Give me one more. I am what? That I am, I am strong. Ooh, I love that one. I am strong. Tell me, you kind of like had a revelation there. Tell me what happened in your heart and your mind when you said that. Why is that important to you? Um, <sighs> because, 
because I don't like to I don't like to show signs of weakness that you know I've I've almost my whole life I've been having to get in and get it done and and um so that I'm not I don't want to say not showing a sign of weakness but um Because I don't like to, <laughs> I don't like to show vulnerability, and uh, I don't know, it's just easier for Satan to come in and prey on you when you're when you're in your weakest moments. Mm -hmm. So I have to try to keep myself strong to to help these bouts of the depression and anxiety and and. Uh, I don't want to say you can't ever not, once you have PTSD, you can't not have it because things are going to trigger it. But, I mean, it is possible because, I mean, God can always because be there what? for you. Because, because all things are possible. All, all with things. God. That's right. All so, things are possible. All things are possible. So let me let me, uh, let me take some of your verbiage, and I love your verbiage, but I'm going to shift it just slightly, and I'm going to add some scripture here, and it says, in your greatest weakness, his power is perfected. Okay? So I love that you're like, man, I feel like there's all these places where I have to just kind of like pull myself together, and I have to be strong. Um, and so I love the strength. Um, you said, I feel as though God is saying you are strong. I want to make sure that you have an understanding that there's a difference between my own strength and the strength of the spirit within me. Okay. So it feels as though perhaps you're coming to the end of your own strength and you're frustrated with yourself. And now you feel super vulnerable, super weak, but God is saying, this is my strong spot right here. This is when you're finally tapping into me. You got to, you know, where you kind of come to the end of yourself we, we often say, like, we come to the end of our natural, we find the super, right? right? And so when you all of a sudden have this revelation that I am strong, you're, you're compacting because you have come to the end of your own natural weakness. The enemy is trying to tell you that you are weak. But God is saying, actually, it's as you come to the end of your weakness that you're actually going to tap into your real strength in the spirit. Okay? So I want you to write that statement down. But I want you to put... Be, uh, by his Holy Spirit, by your Holy Spirit, I am strong. By your Holy Spirit, I am strong. So I really want you to distinguish, yes, you are strong. We are strong, but we are strong because of the Holy Spirit within us. That's what it's talking about in Habakkuk, where it says, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Okay? Because our might and our power, your strength, your own solutions they will wear out, but God's power will never wear out. Okay. So, um, we've kind of come up with three statements, declarative statements. Read those for me, please. Um, I am, I am enough. I am worthy and I am strong. Okay. Would you say that these are all truths about who you are in the spirit? What God would say to you? Yes. Okay, I agree. If you guys agree with her, put we agree with you in the comments. Now, it's important that we recognize that we can come up with a true statement of what God says is true for us, but we have to back that up with Scripture because it's the authority of the Scripture that really starts to shift these truths. So, um, so lots of people throwing out lots of verses. Everybody's agreeing. Uh, Tammy says Ephesians uh, 610 is be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Okay, so you would turn that into a declaration that says, I am strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So now you make your declarative statement, but you're enforcing it with the authority of the scriptures. Okay, your first one was, I am, what was the first one? I am enough. I, I am enough. I am enough. So again, a scripture there is uh, when scripture says um, that you are more than enough, that he, is, he has filled you talks about the anointing of the Lord, fill, lot of, or that, that you're overflowing with the, the anointing of the Lord, that the, that the blood of Jesus Christ in you, the righteousness of God is enough for him. Um, 
So all of these things, I am enough. The lie there is that I'm never going to be good enough. But God says you are perfectly wholly made. So again, you're going to take some time. And I want you to look up, and I'm going to give you this assignment to do. I want you to, to come up with scriptures that are going to back up those three statements. Okay, so I don't want you to just state them because you believe them. We all know that they are truth. But you've got to <laughs> attach scripture to them so that you are enforcing that now. And once you're attaching scripture to it, now these become your declaration. God, you say that because you are enough, I am enough. God, you said because of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ was enough to redeem me from the pits of hell, to, to redeem me, God, from all the imperfections of sin. God, I am enough. I agree with you. So I'm now I'm attacking it with scripture, right? Um, God, you say that in my greatest weakness, your power is being perfected. So I declare right now that as I am feeling the weaknesses of my flesh coming to the end of myself, I'm declaring that your power is being perfected in me right now in Jesus name. And because of that, God, I am strong. God, I declare that in your mighty power, I am strong. Okay. So now I'm really, what was your third, your third? I am strong. Okay. What was the other one? The second one? I am worthy. I am worthy. Yes. God, because of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, you declare that I am worthy. God, not because of anything I've done, but because of what you did. And so, Father, I agree with you. I am worthy, and I break the lie off of me that would say I have no value when God says, you say, you, I was worth the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. So I agree with you, Lord. I am valuable, and I'm going to get up, and I'm going to be who I say I am. I'm going to faith it until I become it. That's that action. Because tomorrow you're going to get up at what time? Nine o'clock. And what are you going to do at nine o'clock when you get up? I'm going to go take a shower. You're going to go take a shower. And then what are you going to do? Take my TV out of my room. And I'm going to take my TV out of my room. <laughs> I'm going to take my TV out of my room. And then I'm going to go walk Kyra. Okay. All right. And how are you going to feel tomorrow when you make good choices and you start taking authority over your own life? I'm going to feel the depression sliding off of me. <clears throat> no. So checking it off. Mm -hmm. Chucking it off. So tomorrow, um, as you're in the shower, you have written down those declaration statements. I want you to carry them around with you all day long. And I really okay. want you to um, change, change the thought patterns that are going on in your head. Um, and remember, you're going to have to look up some scriptures to attack those because it's the scripture that's really going to transform you from the inside out. So you're going to take, pick those up, take that, take that with you everywhere, and you're going to read it all day long, all day long, all day long. Um, not just tomorrow, but for several days to come. You're going to begin asking the Lord, how do I add to this truth action. Show me what to do. Show me who to call. And you're going to really start um, faithing it until you become it. Right. Is this resonating with your spirit? Yes, it is. <clears throat> so I've got uh, the back of my doors are a chalkboard. So I can take in and write down things on my but I don't want to be in here but that way I've got them written down so I don't lose my mm -hmm. paper but um I think well, at the top of your door you can write read this and then leave this room right read and leave <laughs> read and leave that's right leave. that's right um, so we have several people that are just saying that they agree with you. If you guys have anything you want to add, how many of you agree that we will be praying for Shannon this week and that we agree that the joy of the Lord is her strength? See, the enemy's stealing your joy because he's stealing your shit. That's why when you said, I am strong, it was a key phrase um, because it was telling me that that was a spiritual statement. And you were like, I am strong. And it was the, end, the, the spirit reminding you that you are strong. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. yes. I know I know better. Yeah. Well, we all know better, but getting, being better is what's a challenge, right? We can know something, but to actually be it. The, the, what I'm saying to you is don't wait till you're feeling it to be it. 
be right. it until you feel it. Right. Okay. Really Lots of people praying for you tonight. Super vulnerable Thanks. for you to just pop right on here super live. Um, do you feel like this was helpful to you? Very much so. Good. Very much so. Because I'm like, I usually catch you live when I need it the most. <laughs> and I'm First like, time. yeah, I'm like, okay, God, I know. I'm going to go listen. <laughs> that is the Lord looking out for you. you. Remember when I said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That yeah. even if you were to settle in the depths of hell, even there he would find you. That is a perfect example of how God has found you tonight. So let me just pray over you. Um, God, I just thank you for Shannon. I thank you, Father, that tonight you found her, God. That at just the right time, right, this was just the right space, God, you prompted um, a prayer that would just encourage her and would loose her, Father, would shake her free, Father, from the thoughts that she's been in agreement with. I thank you, God, that um, that depression is not bigger than she is, that the darkness is not darker than your light. We we declare and we decree, God, that you are a winner, that you have won for her. We thank you, Father, that you have set her free from all all effects of depression on the cross. And so I thank you, Lord, that even right now, that she's being reminded of who she is, who you are, and what you've done for her. I thank you, Father, that she doesn't have to stay stuck. But you have given her the ability to partner with you and to shake herself out of her current thought process and to shift herself into the fullness of who you say she is. I'm asking Holy Spirit that you would invade her spaces and places this week. I'm calling forth, God, the power of the Spirit to rise up inside of her and that she would discover how strong she is, not by her own might, not by her power, her power but by your Spirit. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray all these things. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Okay, Shannon, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for right. being so vulnerable to me. You're welcome. I love you. you. Love you too. Love no, you uh, Bye. Okay, you guys, so um, super proud of Shannon tonight. So again, just kind of a pop uh, counseling session. I just felt led to do that tonight. I'm telling you, that is honestly why I was like, uh, I just feel like the Lord is, is saying like, this is how people are going to get set free. If you feel like, um, if you feel like you got some freedom, even just by watching that, or you learned how to really minister to yourself, because really my my goal here is to teach and train you how to minister to yourself. How do I discover what I'm feeling? How do I discover the emotion or the, the message behind that feeling? If you feel like um, this was empowering for you, um, uh, leave me a comment um, because I, I really feel as though this might be something that the Lord will have me do. I, I'm, I'm not going to say, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I just love to counsel people. I love to connect with people. I think it's a very effective way to um to minister to other people is by demonstration and so in some regard we had a live counseling session here where you can kind of learn uh